Hello, Matt here. Today we are going to be talking about J.L. Mackey's argument when it comes to the um, subjectivity of values. Okay, so what's J.L. Mackey's view? Well, he does not think that there are any objective values. He says that they are not part of the fabric of the world. According to Mackey, he thinks that all moral statements are false. So this makes Mackey an error theorist. And this is different than the previous view that we talked about, David Hume's. David Hume was what's, in, what's called now an expressivist. And according to expressivism, when someone makes a statement about moral claims or a moral, a moral statement, something like murder is morally wrong, all, all they are doing is expressing something about themselves. In that case, they might be saying that they disapprove of murder or they have bad feelings about murder. And so they're, when they say murder is morally wrong, they are just stating they are expressing that. When it comes to error theory, Mackey thinks that all moral statements are false. And why? Or let me give you a couple of examples. So these are all examples of moral statements. We have a duty to help others. Murder is morally wrong. Murder is also not morally wrong. All of these are false. They are all false. This is what error theory states. So why would anybody think that? Why does he say they're not part of the fabric of the world? Or well, in order for a statement to be true, that statement has to be grounded in the right way in reality or out there in the world. So here's an ex a way of thinking about this. I've got a statement here. My car is silver. And that statement matches up with physical reality in the right way. And so the statement's true. It's grounded by the actual car. Well, this isn't actually my car, but we'll just pretend like it is. So this statement's true because it, it matches up or it corresponds with or it's grounded in reality. And we can think of other statements that are true like this, too, that don't have to do with color. So my, my cat weighs, I don't know, 10 pounds. If that statement is true, then it's got to be grounded in the right way in reality. So we would go and we would weigh my cat. And if my cat did, in fact, weigh 10 pounds, then the statement would be true. Or we can think of um, the things that science tells us are true. If we have a certain chemical compound and we make a statement about that when you mix these two compounds it creates a reaction well we would just mix the two compounds and our when we observe them if the reaction takes place then the statement's true because it's grounded in reality in the right way now other statements aren't grounded in reality in the right way or they don't match up with with reality so here's one my car has fur like a badger well, my car doesn't have fur like a badger. It does not match up with reality in the right way. So this statement is false. And any false statement is going to have the same kind of problem. So if I say that my cat actually weighs a million pounds, well, my cat doesn't weigh that much. When we throw it on the scale, it doesn't match up. So the statement's false. Well, let's take a look at another kind of statement. So statements like unicorns fart rainbows don't have any kind of physical reality for them to match up with in the same way that my car is silver does have a physical reality for it to match up with. So this statement is false. And we can think of other statements that are like this. Um, things like Harry Potter has round glasses. Well, Harry Potter doesn't actually exist. So this statement's going to be technically false according to Mackie too. Or hobbits are short is going to be false because there are no hobbits. There's nothing nothing out there in the world for that to match up with. Now, in in the story, they're true. So in, in a way, they're true. But strictly speaking, they are false. Now let's think about how this, uh, this relates to moral statements, like murder is morally wrong. Well, that statement, there is nothing out there in physical reality that matches up with the moral wrongness of the murder. So if we were to describe someone being murdered, we could describe the what takes place, the actual physical 
description of what's going on. Someone gets stabbed or shot or something like that. And we can describe in great detail what's going on based on our observations. But we would never see out there in the world the wrongness of the killing. So it doesn't have anything out in physical reality to match up with in the right way, like my car of silver did. And so technically, according to Mackey, all statements like this are going to be false. So this is what he means by that by moral statements are not part of the fabric of the world, that there is nothing out there for them to match up with in the right way. There's nothing that grounds them or that they correspond to in reality. And so we might he might say something like, well, in in a way, Harry Potter has round glasses is true in the story. But the story is not true. It's fiction. Well, we might say something like murder is morally wrong is in a certain way true because it's a fiction like Harry Potter is a fiction. But strictly speaking, Harry Potter doesn't exist. And so the we're kind of making an error when we say that something like that is true. And in the same way, murder is morally wrong. We're making a similar error. So this is why he's called an error theory. They're not strict they're strictly speaking false okay so why would he say something like this well he's got a couple of arguments in the chapter in his in his um, paper on the subjectivity of, of values and the first one we can call the argument from relativity and it's based on the fact that moral codes vary they vary from society to society they vary from time period to time period and Mackey thinks that this is just empirically verified. All we got to do is make some observations and we'll see that moral codes vary from the southeastern United States to uh, a place in Asia or Africa or even within the United States. There might be some variation in moral codes. There's also variation in moral codes from time period to time period. So what was considered a... Uh, a moral way of acting a couple hundred years ago might no longer be considered a moral way of acting today. So some examples. The time period ones are easier to come up with. So you just think about slavery in the United States, for instance. Many people thought that slavery was morally acceptable a few hundred years ago in the United States. We today don't. We think it's an abomination. It's morally wrong. And we can't imagine why anybody would enslave someone else. So moral codes also vary from society to society. For instance, you might have a society where it is morally acceptable to eat another person, say, in a cannibalistic society. Whereas we pretty much frown on that. It's, it's morally wrong to eat another person according to our society. So Mackey points out all of these variations in moral codes from different societies and different time periods. And he notes that this is really hard to reconcile with objectivism when it comes to moral values. So if there were objective moral values, we would... Mackey thinks that we would expect to see a whole lot more um, agreement when it comes to moral statements and moral judgments. But these we, we, we don't see the agreement. We see radical differences from these different moral codes. And because of this, Mackey thinks that we should be skeptical of whether or not there actually are objective moral values. He thinks that the, the, the best way to explain these differences is by thinking about the direction of explanation of the different moral codes. The, the best way to explain this, according to Mackey, is that our moral values are, don't arise from us observing the world and seeing moral values out there in the fabric of the universe. Rather, we have a particular way of life. And our moral values arise as a result of our way of life rather than us coming to <clears throat> a particular way of life because we see the truth of morality. So if you think about um, 
several hundred years ago in the United States. We had a way of life in the southeastern United States based with these plantations that required slavery for their labor. And so there was a way of life and the moral judgments arose as a way of that more as a result of that moral life rather than the other way around rather than them saying oh yeah there's nothing wrong with with slavery so let's create a society that's based on slavery so the direction of explanation is is different and that's the best way to explain the variation in moral codes according to Mackey all right that's the argument from relativity the argument from queerness is his next argument for the subjectivity of values. So right off the bat, we should I, I should note here, Mackey is using queer in a different way than we use it today. So according to Mackey, this was written a, a while ago, queer just meant strange back then. It had nothing to do with sexual orientation. Okay, so our first premise. We have to think about what objective values would be if they did exist. So we've already gone over his his reasoning for why he doesn't think that they are objective features of, of the of physical reality. There's there's nothing out there that we could observe, and when we see someone doing something wrong, we can point to oh, there's the wrongness in this situation. There's no scientific test that we could use to find them. There's no scale or um, moral um, instrument like a thermometer a moral moralometer that we could go out and test for moral values um, as a result they would be very strange according to Mackey if they did exist they would be utterly different than any other kind of thing that exists out there in the world um, they would have to be in something like um, invisible they would be um, non-material they would be utterly different than any other thing in the universe so they would be very strange here's the other problem so if they are invisible and if they are non-material and there is no instrument that we can use to test for these things then how do we come to know that something's morally right or morally wrong well we're gonna have to have some kind of special faculty some kind of special moral perception that is utterly different than any other way of knowing other things. So it's really easy to see how we come to know things that are visible. We have a visible, we have a perception, our, our sense of sight that we can use to detect visible things. It's also easy to understand how we would come to know things that are hot or cold because we have a sense of touch. Or we think of our sense of taste and we can come to know facts about the world about whether things contain sugar or that they're sweet but when it comes to to moral statements and there's no there's nothing physical out there there's no they're they're not visible they're not material uh, it's really hard to understand how we come to know these things so it's going to have to be some kind of special faculty that's different than any other way of knowing maybe some kind of moral intuition and that's weird too. So not only are objective values strange things, but the way that we would have to come to know them is weird too. All right, so we have no good reason to believe that these strange entities exist. According to Mackey, we have no good reason to think that we have this special moral sense organ. So we have no good reason to believe in objective moral values. So these are the two arguments for why Mackey doesn't think that moral judgments or moral values are part of the fabric of the universe. Now we can think about whether or not these are good arguments. So I'm going to go back to the argument from relativity. I'll put it all up here. One, how might one object to these arguments? One way uh, that you might object is you might call into question premise one. It seems like Mackey might be overstating his case when he uses this as an argument for um, from relativity for the fact that there are no objective values so yes it is true that moral codes vary but do they really vary that much is he overstating his case here and many philosophers have noted that Mackey is right when it comes to specific instances or specific applications of moral codes 
but it seems like he might be wrong when it comes to more general moral principles. Perhaps there is much more agreement when, when it comes to general moral principles, and the disagreement comes in our application of those moral principles, because there's different situations where we need to apply those moral principles. For, so here's an example. Um, here, a general moral principle might be treat, though, treat other people with respect. And I've been in, in other cultures where it's a sign of respect to not look somebody in the eye when they're talking to you. It's actually a sign of disrespect to look somebody in the eye when they're talking to you. But in the place where I, I grew up in the southeastern United States, and if somebody's talking to you and you respect them, you're expected to look them in the eye. And that's a sign of showing them respect. So the general moral principle here is that you should show other people respect. But in different situations, different cultures or societies, the way that you show people respect is very different. So many people say that, well, the Mackey's overstating his case because the general moral principles are the same. It's just the application of these that are different. And so that's a way that you might object to this argument. Um, another way you might object is to um, reject premise two. Mackey seems to think that radical differences in first order moral judgments are hard to reconcile with objectivism. So he's pointing out that there's some disagreement and disagreement over for first order moral judgments, like more, whether one thing is right or wrong, um, is hard to, to reconcile with, with objectivism. But we can just call into question that and say, why, why would we think that radical differences in people's judgments are hard to re reconcile with objectivism? For instance, there are radical differences in judgments concerning the fundamental nature of physics. Physicists disagree greatly over what the fundamental nature of physics is. Um, but would we say that there's no objective fact of the matter when it comes to physics, just because we have radical differences in judgments about the, the nature of physics? Um, uh, it doesn't seem like we would. So it seems like we've got reason to doubt premise two as well. Okay, so now... Is this one a good argument? The argument from queerness. I I think that many people might agree with premise one, that yes, these objective values are different than any other kinds of things that exist in the universe. Um, but other people might disagree and say, well, there, there actually are things that we believe in, that lots of people believe in, um, that are different. That are strange. They're not physical. For instance, many people think that mind is not physical. And so they might reject premise one because they think that moral values are are like mind. It's not, not a physical thing. And that's also strange. Um, another way of rejecting this is just because something's strange doesn't mean that it's false. There, there are some really strange facts that science has um, discovered. So I mentioned physics earlier. The, the fundamental nature of physics is it's going to be strange. And it's going to be utterly unlike anything that we've experienced before. But that doesn't mean that they're not true or they're not objective. Um, so it seems like we might have reason to doubt premise one. Okay, and that is a reason to doubt this. So I've given you some food for thought. We've gone over Mackey's arguments. And we've gone over some reasons to doubt whether or not they are good arguments. So you should think about them and whether or not they are, they are good arguments or whether or not you can think of any other objections besides the ones that I've come up with. So that's all for this one.